What is the single most important factor for successful AI implementations in business? Uh, algorithms, unlikely. Availability of clean data, maybe. Um, clarity on AI use case and how it links to the business, quite likely. Hi, this is Ashutosh, CEO at IDEC the company on a mission to simplify AI implementation for businesses. And we are doing a series of information sessions on how businesses can use AI in a very simple way um, with, with lot of, lots of practical and real world examples. So let's begin. In our experience, clarity on your AI use case is paramount. And what do I mean by clarity here? Well, it starts with really understanding the overarching business objective that you're trying to solve for. How does your AI use case deliver that, deliver that business objective? And how does the AI use case translate into the specific problem, the mathematical problem that you're trying to solve for? How does the frame solution then integrate into the business processes? And finally, what are the governance and tracking processes around that implementation? In this presentation, we'll look at some very useful AI frameworks that will help you uh, select and build AI use cases for your own business. At IDEC, we are all about simplifying AI and finding the fastest part to business value. So we'll keep the technical details at a minimum level, which is absolutely required for you to uh, use these frameworks. But we would rather focus on the use cases themselves, which will help bring the core AI concepts to a practical level. So let's start. First up, let's look at AI by application type. Descriptive analysis is exploring historical data to find trends and answers to specific questions. Visualization with bars, graphs, and charts is key part to its delivery. Predictive AI is about building mathematical models that predict future events, often customer behavior. They're also used to find natural segmentation in data that can be very helpful for example, to understand the profile of your customers better. Prescriptive AI provides the answers on what is the optimal action to take given all the descriptions and predictions in prior steps. This is a crucial integration step for realizing business value through AI. Finally, generative AI helps to make sense and indeed produce responses to text, images, audio, and video inputs. This area of AI has seen a lot of progress in the last few years. It is probably the most recognized form of AI out there. Let's build up on our understanding of application types with a use case of a lending business issuing personal loans. For some unknown reason, this business sees a decline in the number of new customers being accepted for the loan product. This obviously means a declining revenue line. Also alarming is that the bad rate of the accepted customers is increasing. This usually means a declining bottom line as well for the business. Now, in the descriptive analysis section of AI, the business can analyze things like trends on accept or default rates for various time periods. Specific analysis on which segment of customers are most affected and why would also be helpful. Descriptive analysis is usually very unbounded, so multiple types of analysis are possible. However, it's very important to keep them targeted and unbiased. We will look into th this in details in one of the future sessions. Using predictive AI, Models to predict default probabilities of the customer can be built. Price sensitivity to demand models can also be helpful to try and diagnose the declining book on rate. Prescriptive AI can be used to compute the optimal product features such as the principal amount, term and interest rate 
individualized to each customer loan. For generative AI, reports with credit decision reasons can be built automatically. Also, chatbots can be trained to answer specific customer queries during the application process. With these AI application types, it is crucial to integrate them to deliver real business value through your use case. So predictive analytics helps you plan for future events given the past occurrences, which is summarized through descriptive analysis. Prescriptive analytics, on the other hand, is often a natural point where descriptive and predictive analytics can integrate to deliver business value. It is unfortunately very common to see predictive models not directly being used for prescriptive AI in organizations. You would almost want to go backwards from prescriptive analytics to predictive and descriptive for best alignment of AI to business value add. Finally, generative AI can itself take predictive models and prescriptive solutions as inputs to deliver process automation for a foolproof value delivery. Now, let's further expand the AI applications by problem types. We are now getting more into the world of data scientists. As a business user, it's very important to understand these problem types as this will help you better collaborate with your data scientists. It is also a basis to understand the assumptions, strengths and weaknesses of various AI techniques that we will further look into. Starting again with descriptive analysis, you could do some useful basic statistics like correlations or visualization of summarized data through graphs, charts, etc. You could also do some root cause analysis into specific things. Descriptive analysis is, is unrestricted by its very nature and we will dedicate one of our future sessions to understand when it is useful and when it is just too noisy. For predictive AI, Models can be built to classify entities into known classes, estimate a continuous value of an entity, or create new classes to group entities into. We shall look into these in more detail shortly. With prescriptive AI, you can optimize a business objective, recommend the right next action given a list of possible actions, and also rank order your recommendations. With generative AI, you can build programs to process and generate natural language. You can also process and generate image, audio, video data. This is motivated by the idea of AI to see like a human, hear like a human. Let's look into all of these in more details. Let's take the example of a health insurance business trying to predict which customers are likely to claim an insurance in future. This can be solved by predictive classification and AI technique that can classify customers into likely to claim for insurance and not likely to claim. Now, if there are some customers making a fraudulent claim, a special classification technique called anomaly detection can be used. For predicting how much someone would claim if they claim, a predictive continuous estimation technique can be used. Forecasting is a special form of continuous estimation which can be used not just to predict how much someone would claim for but also how that amount will be spread across time. For understanding predictive clustering technique, let's take an example of a credit card and personal loan issuing business. It could be useful to group the customers into behavioral categories for sales, marketing and product optimization purposes. Predictive clustering is the AI technique to achieve this and it creates the output categories directly from data. Of course, a human user could label the different categories into useful definitions later. Moving on to prescriptive optimization. Decisions such as increasing or decreasing the credit card limit for a particular customer can be optimized. You may or may not want the prescriptive technique to use the previously created customer clusters. Optimization also lets you manage business constraints such as maintaining bad rate under certain threshold as you target to optimize net returns on each customer by increasing or decreasing their credit limit. A prescriptive recommendation technique 
will help you, for example, cross-sell personal loans to the right existing cre credit card customers at the right time. A prescriptive rank ordering technique could then tell you uh, whether for each customer it's best to increase the credit limit or offer personal loan. With natural language generative AI technique, you could train a chatbot to read, understand, and answer customer queries on their credit card statements. Of course, such an application will also use predictive techniques such as computer vision. With image audio video generative AI techniques, you could use image processing for a face recognition sign-on for your customer into your business app. Now let's move on to the world of data scientists as these AI problem types or techniques are themselves underpinned by mathematical algorithms such as logistics regression and neural network. Bulk of algorithms available are applicable to predictive classification and predictive continuous estimation techniques. Many algorithms can indeed do both. Whilst the exact maths behind these algorithms may not be required for a business user, a general understanding is very useful to weigh strengths, weaknesses and limitations of these techniques. This is helpful in making decisions when these algorithms produce contradictory results and also to quantify uncertainty risks inherent in the algorithmic outputs. We will discuss these algorithms in future sessions. The final framework to understand is learning types for these algorithms. This may not be as relevant as uh, prior frameworks for the business user. However, it determines the computational and deployment complexity of AI. Supervised learning, where inputs and outputs are both labeled by humans, is the most widely used category as it is computationally least complex of the three. Unsupervised learning, where the output data is not explicitly labeled, allows for a more free exploration of the input data. However, its computation and deployment is more complex than supervised learning. Finally, reinforcement learning is the most industry nascent category of the three. In this, the learning of algorithm happens through a certain proportion of trial and error. As the machine learns to maximize some predefined reward by finding the optimal action. This learning is most complex to compute and deploy and so far mostly being used in gaming and robotics. Let's bring all the categories together to leave you with this final AI framework which will help you understand your AI use cases better. Hope you found this presentation on AI frameworks useful and relevant for your business. Uh, please leave us uh, some feedback so we can continue to improve on delivering guidance on AI implementation. Thank you.